People know what's wrong with Web 2.0, so they're all psyched up and ready for Web 3, right? Not so much, according to a new survey. Apparently, people need to figure out what it is first. A look at the survey results are coming up on For Immediate Release. Another fine podcast from the FIR Podcast Network. This is For Immediate Release, the podcast for communicators. Everybody and welcome to episode number 233 of For Immediate Release. I'm Shell Holtz. And I'm Neville Hobson. In this episode, U.S. consumers are still in the dark when it comes to Web 3.0. That's the finding from a survey from National Research Group conducted in January. Depending on who you ask, Web 3.0, otherwise known as Web 3, is either a scam or a brighter future for the internet, a more decentralized digital world in which power is taken away from big platforms and put back in the hands of ordinary users. What's clear is that these users aren't happy with the state of the modern web. Over the past five years, consumers think the internet has become more commercialized, that's 80% of them, and addictive, 79%, and has encouraged people to treat each other more cruelly, 69%. And 70% of Americans say they no longer feel in control of how their data is used online. These are the key findings, I think, from the National Research Group survey, as I mentioned, published in January, of 1,500 U.S. consumers, which, as we were discussing earlier, Shell, is valid from a margin of error perspective, right? That sort of numbers uh, is quite good. Uh, Only 13% of those consumers surveyed think they know what Web 3.0 means. And over half, 54%, have never heard of that term at all. So there's a foundational start point for this conversation, Shell. I I actually am not surprised to hear any of that at all. Uh, And indeed, some of the other findings reinforce a view that, that this you could argue, is in a bubble. And I don't mean in the sense of financial explosion imminently, a bubble of people who are talking about this all the time and the rest of the world has no idea what this is about and couldn't care less. Is that a fair assessment, do you think? Well, I think so. Uh, Maybe a little less on the couldn't care less because I (laughs) think that they do want to see change. They know what they're unhappy about with the current state of affairs. They know what they would like to see done differently. They just don't know enough about Web3 to understand whether it's going to accommodate those desires. And if it does, how? I mean, there's 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 one finding in the survey that I I just found funny. And uh, the the question was, who has responsibility to ensure that Web3 has a positive social impact, and 51% of the respondents said tech companies were the ones. And, of course, Web3 disintermediates those very companies. The whole idea of Web3 is that Web2 consolidated a lot of power with Facebook and Google and Amazon uh, and the other big tech companies who control the platforms that we use to engage with each other. And Web3 does away with that, sort of. I mean, you know, one of the foundational concepts of Web3 is that Web2 is not going anywhere. Uh, You'll still have a a Facebook to go to and an Instagram, and you'll still be able to buy stuff on Amazon. Nobody's suggesting that this is going away. But Web3 is, is, the people who are developing all of this, what, really makes them excited about doing this work is knowing that it puts the power back in the hands of the individual, the control of their own data uh, in particular, back in the hands of the individual, privacy. So the idea that the big tech companies are the ones who are going to be responsible for ensuring that it has a positive social impact. These are the ones who have made sure that Web 2 has a negative social impact. Uh, (laughs) I just found that uh, interesting. Fortunately, 50% said web developers and engineers, and they're the ones who are doing this work. It's it's sort of at a grassroots level that these coders are, are creating all of this stuff. Yeah. It's actually interesting, that comparison with Web 2.0 and the, the, the feeling that the tech companies are kind of at the pinnacle of all of this. 
because uh, one of the other findings I suppose you could say is related to that is consumers still have a lot of reservations about Web 3.0, whether they understand it or not. Uh, the most common related fear or Web 3 related fear among consumers, according to the survey, is that it will make scams and cybercrime more common. A third said that. Additionally, nearly a third of consumers are worried that Web 3.0 will render their existing devices obsolete. And 27% fear that it will make the internet an even more addictive place than it is today. These actually, to me, illustrate the confusion and lack of clarity uh, uh, out there about what is Web3. Hence, the results of survey where a significant number of people have no idea what it actually means. So there is conflict information. This is not addressed in the survey, uh, but that surely would contribute to reservations, uh, the, the one about their devices being obsolete, uh, for instance. I've not heard that much, but if people believe that, then there's an obstacle to uh, to the take-up of this. And this whole thing about disintermediation of the tech industry is, I think, uh, uh, an unlikely outcome, uh, personally. I, I think is uh, we're seeing, uh, as, as some observers say, and this is not in the survey, but I'm just projecting the, uh, the, the thinking out here, that um, we're going to see Web 3.0. That's just another version of Web 2.0, but maybe a prettier looking one that uh, lets people have more choice over things, but they certainly don't have control. And therein lies, I think, one of the bigger issues that hasn't really surfaced yet is precisely that. Uh, this disintermediation, is it a pipe dream? Um, there's this whole thing about decentralization that is a big topic. Now, consumers, as this survey illustrates, don't talk about words like that. They're, they're looking at this much more from a surface viewpoint. It is significant, though, that if people are confused about this, that makes it, I think, uh, uh, ever more difficult for um, uh, elements of Web3, like uh, NFTs, uh, the metaverse, etc., to get into a more mass market than the tech-focused early adoption crowd than it currently is. That's what it looks like to me. Right. And I think that there, there will be education that will uh, be needed. come with the <laughs> evolution of Web3. So, for example, uh, people will have uh, control over their data because their data will reside in their wallet and they will decide what they're going to share uh, as long as they're transacting business through the transaction layer of a blockchain-based application, uh, as opposed to uh, with uh, you know Facebook or Amazon or whomever, because yeah. the whole idea in, in Web two, your identity is on their servers, and that's why they're able to sell that to advertisers, and and uh, that's where the whole issue of privacy comes in. But now, you know, with Web three, it's in your wallet, and you know, there there are foundational principles about you know, when somebody has access to your wallet and you know basically everybody does but through the cryptography through the public private key encryption uh they only are entitled to the minimum required so if if you're trying you know let's say you're you're 18 years old and you're trying to get in to see an R-rated movie and they want proof that you are 18 that's what they get to see from your identity uh it's it's a trusted a bit of information, but they don't get to see when you were born. They just get to see, you know, you made a claim. I'm old enough to see this movie and they check and it, and, and it looks at your wallet and, and it comes back and says, yep, he's old enough to see this movie. It doesn't say he was born on this date in this year. Yeah. So that's the level of control that comes with this. But clearly this is not something that people understand. Cryptography is, is no. very complex. Uh, I'm understand. reading a book on it right now, mm -hmm. which is why, I, why I'm able to sound, uh, you know, a little bit articulate about it. Uh, you know, a month from now, after I've read the book, this may all fade and and I'll be confused again. But but right now, I find it very exciting. Yeah, no, I, it is interesting. Um, I, I think there definitely is a lot of education needed here, and there's insufficient of that. But it may well come. I was quite intrigued too on other aspects of this survey that talk about elements such as NFTs. Uh, and one finding, well, I guess it doesn't surprise me, although it kind of does too. 71% uh, of consumers have now heard of NFTs. They have heard of NFTs, but only 26% of those who said that believe they have a good sense of what the term actually means. And only 22% 
can correctly identify what NFT stands for. So they've heard of NFTs. They're not quite sure what they are. And actually, that doesn't surprise me because it's. I think it's partly the hype. You hear about, you know, Paris Hilton, NFT in the same fret. So, OK, I know what NFTs are because hey, that celeb is doing something with them. Uh, and all the other th- people who are involved in all of this. Interestingly, too, the most common motivation among NFT buyers, people who are buying NFTs, was to make money. That's 37% of them said that. Uh, only 22% said they did so because they liked the aesthetics of it. And I mentioned Paris Hilton just now. The survey says celebrity endorsements have played a major role in the growth of the market for NFTs, with 25% of owners saying these endorsements were a factor in their decision to start buying NFTs. The celeb that consumers most strongly associate with NFTs and cryptocurrencies is Elon Musk. And there's a handful of others there who will be familiar with most people, I'm sure. So there's lots of this. Um, And you, you look at the flip of uh, the third of consumers who've never purchased an NFT uh, say the reason for that is they don't understand the technology at all. That's the prime reason where they don't. So we're in this phase of early adoption where we don't have clarity of understanding. We have lots of information about what's going on and not many people understand it much. And there's a crying need for communication, if you like, to educate people on what it all is. You can't actually, I don't see, see a realistic proposition of setting up things now to educate people. This is going to grow over time. Uh, And I believe, like you do, I think, Shell, uh, I think we're coming from the same direction on this, that this is a feature of the coming landscape, without doubt. You mentioned uh, wallets, identity, all those elements are going to be there. But the trust gap is huge. And that, again, that's like a lot of things these days, uh, needs to be addressed. And no one really knows how to do that. So uh, it's an exciting landscape, but it's pretty risky to, for most people. Yeah, I would love to see a man on the street interview, you know, uh, Jay Leno out doing jaywalking with his microphone, asking people <laughs> to define the word fungible uh, oh, and see God. what kind of answers you get. Uh, in terms yeah. of NFTs and what people think are doing them for, I think it's important to remember that another foundational concept of Web3 is that creators get paid for their creations. You know, right now, you create something and you put it up on, on Facebook, and it's Facebook that benefits from that. Yeah. I mean, you may get some cred, you may get some comments, but you don't get any money. Uh, and, and, and that's what the change is, right? Yeah. This, is, this is why the blockchain and the wallet and sure. the crypto and the tokens are, are all important is because that's the way you reap some reward for yeah. what you've created. The terms of, in terms of things like NFTs, the marketplaces that are growing are, are the key place for that. But there's significant issues with many marketplaces with scams and forgeries and lack of clarity and mistrust everywhere. So there's lots of work to be done in this embryonic landscape. And we'll be talking more about this, you can be sure. And oh, in fact, yeah, I, would, no I would ask listeners, anyone got any experiences they'd like to share with us on Web3 generally, but NFTs in particular, how have you been doing with it? What's your take? Let us know. But fear not, we are not going to confine ourselves to Web3. We'll, we'll be getting back to some communication-centric uh, episodes here in the, in the very new f- near future. But for now, that'll be a 30 for this episode of For Immediate Release. Mm-hmm.